Well, hello everybody. Thank you for watching. This is the new episode of Psycho Splatters, episode 124, In Tribute, Rest in Peace. Of course, we, this, is, this is kind of an on-the-fly episode, guys, so forgive me on this bit. Um, I'm not really feeling up to, up to snuff here. Um, I haven't been on and off for the last couple days. So you'll have to bear with me. I'm going to try to make this a short episode, if that's okay with you guys. Basically, like I said, I couldn't I couldn't just in the VC community couldn't go off and, like maybe some of these other people already mentioned, a few of the of just the crazy rock deaths, the rock music deaths that have happened over the last 60 days or so. First one, um, by the way, I don't have too many vinyl pieces uh, to show in this episode. I apologize. Um... I'm moving some things around uh, in the in the garage and in the uh, living room, so I pulled out a couple pieces. So you'll have to forgive me about this bit. Like I said, this is just more of an oral tribute. Eh, I said oral. Anyways, <clears throat> we start off, of course, with Scott Weiland, who died December third, twenty fifteen. Uh, drugs and booze was pretty much the uh, the circumstances of his death on the tour bus. Uh, he originally, of course, started it out as the lead singer of one of my favorite 90s bands, Stone Temple Pilots. Um, he ended up having a little bit of a solo career as well as uh, doing various recordings for um, for like one-off groups, you know, offshoot groups. Uh, uh, Tank Girl is coming to mind for the soundtrack there. Uh, and then, of course, he finished off uh, just this past year with Scott Weiland and the Wild About's um, Blaster album, which I've heard a couple cuts off of it. Uh, it's not it's not a really a bad album, um, but uh, I guess I kind of always uh, <clears throat> I heard the rumor there was a real 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 crazy rumor I'm not sure how true it was that uh, the STP might have tried to come back again in '16. Chad Pennington um, from Lincoln Park left um, actually it was about two months before Scott died, and I just have a feeling that I'm like hmm, okay maybe they were going to try to mend fences. Oh, well, you know, what were we going to do with that? <clears throat> Next one, pretty much shortly after that, died on December 28th of 2015, Lemmy from Motorhead, Lemmy Killmeister. Uh, originally got his start uh, in 1965 <laughs> with a little band called the Rocking Vickers over in England. Go figure, they cut three singles for CBS. And, uh, and then a couple years later, 1971, he, uh, he jumped to that psychedelic space rock band Hawkwind, which I don't know about you guys vinyl-wise, but I have a hard time finding Hawkwind albums. I only have Dole Rima So Fa La Ti Do. I think I showed it on an episode a few episodes back with the sticker, go figure. But that's the only Hawkwind album I've got, which leads me to the Motorhead stuff. Um, I've got one Motorhead piece, that's it. It was Record Store Day release, I think it was 2014. I could be wrong on this. It was a picture disc for the album that came out at the time, uh, and it was long, it was hand numbered. I've got one of those. Uh, I've heard you know some of the album on CD, but uh, I'm not going to open the sucker. I decided on that one as well. But I will tell you, <clears throat> Lemmy changed the face of metal. He did. He made it more balls to the wall in your face. And I'm glad. I'm glad. He's a template. Whatever you say, he lived the rock and roll lifestyle. He lived what he sung. Kind of makes sense, don't you think? He did some goofy little stuff like that song with Wendy O. Williams. I remember that. What was it? Stand By Your Man? Yeah, I remember that single. I'm like, what? Other than that, <laughs> the <laughs> Motorhead's Motorhead, man. Ace of Spades is always going to be my favorite. But, um, I mean, I remember hearing Iron Fist, you know, album and No Sleep Till Hammersmith and things like that. But I have to tell you, on a collector's standpoint, out of the 35 years that I've been collecting, and I mean this wholeheartedly, I've never come across any Motorhead albums in the wild. So far, for 35 years, I haven't. Um, I wish I did. I would have bought them. I would have snagged them all. That's why I've only got one Motorhead album. Um, but yeah, like I said, he, he definitely put a new template on heavy metal music, without a doubt. And without him, I don't think it honestly would, would have been affected so much. 
All right, um, next up, of course, going up now to January 10th of this year, David Bowie, Mr. Starman himself, Mr. Chameleon. I went off and I mentioned in the Wax Museum with Ronnie Dark's radio group page. I went off and I said about David, I said, I appreciated the chameleon ways that he did through fashion, sound, and vision throughout his career. I, um, I got also got to confess to you, too, I don't have any Bowie vinyl to show you. Um, I do have a copy of Young Americans in Ziggy, but like I said, I'm moving things around. Um, but I, I, that's another one. I didn't find many Bowie albums in the wild either. It's like, it's like everybody kept kind of holding on to them. Black Star, that last one that he's done, so far, what I mean so far for now, because I'll tell you in a second why I say that, but Black Star is, honest to God, is one of his best works in, in a long time. It had a nice jazz rock bent to it, but after he died, because I started listening to a couple of the tracks before, you know, when it came out on the 8th of, of January, like I listened to Black Star, Black Star, and a, like one or two more tracks, but I didn't hit Lazarus. I didn't listen to Lazarus till the day he died. I'm like, oh God, he knew. He knew he was going. This was his parting gift to the fans. Um, I so want that album, but it's out of stock. It is on. It was on Amazon as of two days ago still, um, and my local record shops don't have it. That's all right. I'll get it. I'll get it. I don't even care if it's an original press. I bet you, you know, I'll get it because it's a wonderful record. Um, okay. Little bits of what I do have, though. Yeah, I know you're going to go, oh, no, he found, he found these. Uh, timeline. Actually, we're going to go January 17th. We're going to jump it slightly. To to Dale Griffin. No, he's not related to Peter, Chris, or Lois. Dale Griffin was the drummer of Mappa Hoople. Yeah. I've got, I've got this little, lovely little piece here from 70, 71. Mappa Hoople, which, of course, if you've never heard of them, really cool group. Ian Hunter, Mick Ralphs, Verdon Allen, Overland Watts, and, like I said, Griffin. This one here is a gatefold. Very cool. On this particular one, they do cut, of, if you you really got me, the Kinks cover at the crossroads. Laugh at me. Backsliding fearlessly. Rock and Roll Queen, I actually like that one too. Rabbit Foot and Toby Time, Half Moon Bay, and Wrath and Roll. So... If you if you know if all you know from Mata Hoople is all the young dudes, go find every one of them. I have most. I'm really pleased about that one. Um, but Dale Griffin, after you know, after Mott broke up in '74 and then came back together in '09, his health wasn't that well. He ended up performing on uh, on the encores of the of the reunion concerts. Martin Chambers from the Pretenders uh, did the drumming for all those sets, which I thought was cool. But, um, you know, he died in his sleep. Uh, he also was a producer at one point or another for Hanoi Rocks and The Cult. I thought that was kind of cool in itself. Uh, the last one I'm going to bring up really quickly, of course, Glenn Fry from The Eagles uh, passed away January 18th from a, com a combination of things. They're, they're saying, really, he had the rheumatoid arthritis for the last 15 years, but uh, they're saying now, possibly, at least the manager and one other source, is saying that the that the drugs that he took for that arthritis might have caused the other side effects that potentially killed him. I'm I'm just saying that's what they're saying. So I don't know, but I've got all the Eagles albums pretty much. But these are the ones that I could find really quick from 1974 on the border with the hits already gone. My man on the border, James Dean, Old 55, and the best of my love. First album to have. Um, Don Felder as a as a guest appearance. This album's also in quad. My buddy Doug Fields has got a copy of that in quad. Uh, and also 